situation. And then uh, Syria is in a no win situation. And then um, I'll be under UC Wilson for affirmative. It might already be on your ballot, but just to make sure. And I'm Scott Boyd representing the negative. Rebels, the other side of this conflict, conflict. The last time 
America intervened in a country that was in a civil war um, and tried to really put something forward, we ended up with North Korea, North Korea and South Korea. It was a divided nation. No one wins in that situation. Syria isn't Syria anymore. They can't win if they don't exist. Uh, Syria, for these reasons, the situation is in currently. Uh, nothing, you can't add things on. My opponent can't come over here and change something. We are talking about the current situation. We're in a no-win situation. There's no uh, possibility of them to have any benefit from the situation they're currently in. With that, I stand down for politics. Thank you.
between Putin and the 45th President of the United States. There is obvious a relationship. Donald Trump has said that he wants a good relationship with the Russian President and the Russian regime. If the Russian regime is backing Assad, then where does that put the United States? With the election of Donald Trump, that changed the situation from a no-win situation to possibly a win situation. So when we look at what is happening and what is developing, we've got to take that into account. So you can't just listen to evidence, especially as she has defined it, if we're only looking at the current situation. Because by definition, this is a civil war and it is always changing. And then if you look at her second contention, according to PBS, again, November 2016, that isn't today, that isn't 30 minutes ago, the refugees, the people are stateless, they are in a no-win situation. Now, I agree that this is a bad situation. Anytime, anytime people are in a civil war situation, it is horrible, we have all witnessed the death, we have all seen uh, the carnage, it is a horrible situation. But to define it as a no-win no -win situation, a situation that fails to provide benefits, is not looking at the opportunities. When a civil war is taking place, as we have seen from our own history, as we have seen from countless nations around the world, there is always an opportunity to win or a win to emerge. It may not be a win as we would define it personally. It may not be a win as American exceptionalism, that doctrine or nationalism from other, some, some other country would define it, but it is a win nonetheless. Why? Because we see that nations change. We see that nations uh, emerge and evolve, and that is a big deal that must be taken into account in this round. I'll give you a, a big example. When you look at World War II and what happened, you had Germany that was split down the middle. That was a no-win situation. You had the Russians and the Americans on one side. But what did we see in 1989? We saw the, the Berlin Wall fail. We saw that the country was united, and we saw that a new Europe emerged. So the situation changed, and there were countless wins that emerged from that point. Now, as time remains, let me get into my own case. I'm a big fan of Star Trek. Star Trek, uh, Wrath of Khan to be specific, James T. Kirk, one of my uh, favorite all-time fictional uh, leaders, uh, captain of the Starship Enterprise, in Wrath of Khan, he uh, bragged that he once beat the no-win situation. It was known as the Kabashi Maru. It was uh, a situation that tested a Starfleet captain to see how he would handle defeat. Kirk won because he changed the program. So I want to apply that metaphorically to what we're seeing in Syria. There has to be a change in our thinking. There has to be a change in our program. Well, how do we do that? I want to supply what the UN, the United Nations, has suggested as something that goes forward. This is according to the United Nations. So again, when you evaluate the evidence at the end of this round, you've got to look at her evidence and see when was it uh, offered. I'm giving you the UN plan as it stands today. Both sides need to sign a long-lasting ceasefire agreement. That will give an opportunity for the nations of the world to come together and start working on behalf of these people. Number two, if an anti-terror campaign is to be launched, it must be done under the UN flag. This will provide legitimacy. It will take away the nationalistic tendencies. And it will bring other great nations into the world. And number three, only if we undermine the ideology of terrorists will we win this war. So the only way we can do this is not by evidence from yesterday, but today, a UN plan. I stand out the process. Situation. Did you not say the only way is a UN plan? 
It is a UN plan that is today based upon the fact that you're arguing from evidence from yesterday. Point of that I don't recall my exact words, but the point that I was making is that it is a uh, UN plan. Perhaps right. I did I'll say the only way. It is I'll a way. Sure. Now, thanks. Awesome. Moving on, then, you stated that um, Israel should not sign this uh, agreement that I'm assuming you mean we is the U.S. and Russia? Is that your referring to between? Among the U.S. and Russia, and again, the burden here is just to negate this. I don't have to get into specifics. I'm so offering you a way. Said, I'm just wondering who you meant by we. Is that me and you, or is that Russia and uh, China? Is that United States and Russia? Obviously, Russia and the United States okay, are involved, all right. nations of the world. So it could be more, but they're the main players? Sure. Awesome. All right. You then going further with that, you stated that they would need to sign this agreement. Have they shown any signs of going forward with this agreement for a complete ceasefire? Well, when you look at the aspirations of the 45th President of the United States, that he wants to uh, create and carve out a new relationship between Russia, you certainly see opportunities there for that to happen. So, would uh, firing missiles at Syria, would that be an example of him wanting to carve out better relations with the Russian with the Russia, with the Russian backed Assad regime? Well, I think you've got to look at each circumstance and determine what was happening. That was a completely different situation where yeah, you had Assad. Let me, let me finish my answer where you had Assad cross a red line, and you will notice that Russia did not so, interfere with that action. Yeah, they didn't interfere with Assad doing this, but we No, they didn't interfere Russia. with the United States launching missiles at the Assad regime. All right. Um, I'm and they were in a position to do so. Since this article came out, if he had done this, 
then yes, that would be something uh, that would have some merit, but nothing has changed. He said, well, everything's always changing. It's ever changing. Give me one example. He never did. You have to provide proof and not just say uh, phrases. Thank you.
that is in place, that is ready to go, that will solve for the issues, that will make this no-win situation a win situation that will provide benefits for the people, for uh, the situation that is in Syria. And so at the end of the day, I think you can feel very comfortable voting in favor of the negative. Again, congratulations to my opponent, and all the best from Traveling Mercies to all of you.